Hi and welcome to another video on Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Um, a while ago I made this video on how to create a guitar sound on an FM synthesizer and one of the commenters uh, said well the Reface DX that's a 4 operator synth isn't it? So maybe I can create this sound on my YM2612 based machine. And um, the, this chip, it was originally built into the Sega Genesis video game console. So I was intrigued and looked up his video channel. His name is Art Kasser. The link is in the comments. And um, I found out he built his own synth on, based on this chip. And uh, he also sells them on his website. And um, at the time, I didn't want to buy another FM-based synth. There was no need to do that. And he contacted me a month later and said, well, now I have this DIY kit. Are you interested? Uh, it's only half the price. And yeah, I was interested. And um, so today there arrived a parcel. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's grab a soldering iron and try to build this. I haven't touched one in 30 years. So <laughs> pray to the God this works out. Okay, let's go. Okay, so far I've soldered the first bag of components, the MIDI port and some resistors and transistors. And um, yeah, it's going quite well so far. I'm quite surprised. It's a really well laid out um, board uh, for the synth. And one tip I have for you is um, always um, put enough heat on the components so uh, you don't get cold joints because that will uh, reduce the sound quality of the of the synth in the end uh, there will be a lot of noise if you have cold joints so avoid that by applying the soldering iron long enough to heat up the components okay Okay guys, after three or four hours of soldering, um, this thing is finally finished and uh, it looks pretty neat. Uh, there are four tiny screens over here, uh, each one for each operator, I think. Then there's an SD card slot for storing your sounds, a standard MIDI connector, USB port for powering the synth and um, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Um, a switch for turning on and, just, and adjusting the volume and uh, two encoders for using the user interface and um, yeah that's the sound chip and um, here's the chip for the um, operating system and I think this is the controller for the printed keyboard <laughs> here's a one octave keyboard printed directly onto the circuit board that's pretty neat <laughs> Okay, 
let's see if I did my job well and if this thing works and I'm really excited about this. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. <laughs> okay, we got an um, audio connector and um, USB power. Let's turn it on. Oh yeah, oh, this is nice. Um, yeah, it turned on, it worked. That's so satisfying after. Uh, I, I, as I said, I really didn't solder things for many, many years and it works, yeah. And okay, um, the, there are four displays. This looks really nice. And yeah, let's check the encoders. They actually work too. Yeah, and um, here's the keyboard. Let's try this. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, so next step is take a look at the user interface. <laughs> I'm still really flashed. Okay, I've connected this synth by cable to my Reface CP, which will act as a MIDI keyboard. And I also connected it to my Zoom Stomp box for various effects, because this has no own effects section. Let's listen to the first sound here. Yeah, standard FM stuff. Um, yeah, um, the synth has six voices of polyphony and also six voices of multi-timbrality, uh, which is nice, which means that you can play up to six instruments or patches at the same time. Um, yeah, and um, let's add some effects. Chorus, delay, reverb. Okay, let's take a closer look at the user interface. On the first page, you can set up um, the algorithm at well with which the operators are working together. So um, if you press the right encoder, you can change um, the values here. If I turn the left encoder, I can um, change the feedback and I can choose the algorithm with the right encoder. That's Stick with this one, it's the standard electric piano setup. And um, next page, you can change the ratio, uh, which is the difference in frequency between operator one and its uh, modulator. So let's change this a little bit. You can slightly detune it or Sound is now a little bit different. Let's increase this for some brightness. Okay, and um, also on the second branch of operators. Let's stick with this. Next page, you can set up the amplitude envelope. This is a really nice uh, user interface here. Um, let's, for example, get a slower attack on the first set of operators and also on the second set. Okay, and if I change the modulator, then we should have a slightly increased. Um, yeah, we should have this filter effect. Yeah, there you have it. 
Okay, next screen. LFO. So you can um, adjust LFOs for each voice here, uh, for each operator. Let's change, um, for example, the amplitude slightly. Okay. Next page. Um, this is uh, something unique to this synth. Um, you can set up the, um, how the LFO and amplitude envelope um, yeah, should be repeated. For now it's um, only one single repeat, but you can set it up to for example, I can turn on the repeat on um, the third operator and uh, then set up how it should be repeated. There you can hear it. Now it's cycling through the amp envelope of this operator. Now I turn it off and we have uh, the standard sound back. Next page, um, this is the last page. Here you can save and load your sounds. For example, I want uh, my sound to be saved into slot 2. So I can um, turn the wheel here and uh, press the right encoder. Now you can see this uh, small LED was flashing briefly and um, now I've saved this into slot 2 and it's also, I think it's also a MIDI channel 2 um, now and um, yeah now I can save uh, the sound to the SD card by pressing on this icon here with the right encoder yeah and that's it Okay, so that's the DAFM synth by Cassar Art. Now, can I recommend this? Depends on what you want to achieve. If you're looking for a hi-fi FM synth, this is not for you because there's a 9-bit digital analog converter built into this, so your sounds will always be quite noisy. Um, <clears throat> you have to keep that in mind. This is uh, first and foremost an emulator for the Sega Genesis game console. So it comes with all the ups and downsides of that. Um, compared to the Walker FM, which is a roughly the same price range, this one has six voices of polyphony and multi-timbrality. So that's a strong plus for this machine. And also you have to keep in mind that Building this and seeing it work for the first time is really satisfying and yeah, nearly worth the ambition price, at least for me. And um, yeah, this is a fun little project and um, musically it can do a lot of things. And yeah, why don't you take a look at his webpage? It's well documented um, and he is very supportive. So if you find issues with that, uh, he will always yeah, try to find a solution and contact you as fast uh, as he can. At least that was my experience. So my recommendations, great little synth. Yeah, I will now play a short demo and um, yeah, as always, uh, thanks for watching and see you next week. And if you liked this video or found this interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would be much appreciated. Yeah, as always, take care and see you next week. Bye-bye.